All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Camarillo ball python. It's a pretty rare combination of genes. It actually consists of two recessives, the caramel albino and the ultramel. I actually went over to morphmarket.com and they actually have almost a quarter of a million ball pythons listed over there. It's just kind of crazy. And out of all those snakes, they only had seven Camarillos and all of them were just Camarillos without any other genes in the mix. You can't really find one. And as a matter of fact, I think all of them were sold. I don't even think you could buy one. It's a pretty tricky project because the caramel albino looks really similar to the ultramel, but when you actually mix them together, you get the Camarillo. You can definitely tell the difference between the Camarillo, and sometimes you can confuse the caramel albino with the ultramel, but I'd say in most cases, you can definitely tell the difference between the two. So I want to jump over to the internet, and I want to show you how to make a Camarillo ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com, and I want to start with this snake right here. This is a caramel albino ball python, and the caramel albino has been around for quite a long time, and the prices are pretty reasonable. I actually came over here, and I was looking at the price on this one. This is actually a caramel albino, 100% head ghost, and it's sold in 2020 for just $200, which is pretty reasonable for a recessive gene. And the caramel albinos can really vary as far as the visual appearance from one version of the the gene to the other. I actually pulled this one out and this is kind of a more extreme version where the, the background is almost like a root beer brown color which is pretty amazing, pretty unusual for a caramel albino. I actually pulled up a couple other versions over here. Some of them, some of the caramel albinos actually are really faded out, almost looks like ghost which is kind of interesting and as a matter of fact this one's actually 66% possible head ghost and even without the head ghost I've actually seen a lot of these where they're kind of faded out like this. I pulled up another caramel albino over here. Take a look at this one. This one is pretty amazing compared to some of the other ones. It has almost this yellowish background, completely different than some of the kind of the root beer brown colored of the caramel albinos. I actually pulled up one more over here. Take a look at this one. This is over here on the world of ball pythons. And I like to come over here on the world of ball pythons to pull up the individual genes just so I can see how long the gene has been in the ball python industry. If you actually come over here on the world of ball pythons and scroll down to this section right here, it's actually listed when it was first produced. So the caramel albino was first produced in 1996 by Nerd. So it's actually been on the market for about 24 years, which is kind of crazy. And pretty much any gene that's been on the market for 20 plus years, you're pretty much at the bottom of the price. You know, the, the prices for caramel albinos will definitely not go any lower than they are right now. As a matter of fact, they'll probably increase at this point. So take a look at this thing. This is actually an ultramel, also known as ultramelanistic. And the ultramels and caramel albinos, I say a lot of times they can be really close as far as the visual appearance of the two genes. And I'd say, and I'd say in most cases, the ultramel is known for having a darker background as far as having almost like a darker chocolatey color for a background. But let me tell you, the ultramels can really vary from one to the other. I haven't even looked at the prices over here. This one actually sold in 2020 for $500, you can definitely see the ultramels are a lot more expensive than the caramel albinos, which is kind of crazy. So you actually need two, you need the ultramel and the caramel albino to get the Camarillo. So here's another version of the ultramel. It's kind of interesting, and in even in the ultramels, a lot of times you'll see them kind of faded out, almost giving like a ghost-like appearance, like it actually might have, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the ghost is actually a recessive gene, this one's actually 66% possible head ghost. I didn't realize this one is head ghost too, but I've actually seen a lot of the ultramels without the head ghost that are really kind of faded out like this too. I actually pulled up one more ultramel over here and take a look at this one. A lot of the ultramels can really vary, and some of them have almost like a purplish color, almost like a lavender background color versus kind of the chocolatey brown color. That's where it gets a little bit confusing, especially since the ultramel is so variable and the caramel albino is so variable. So if you actually take an ultramel and you breed it to a caramel albino, this is what you'll end up with. You'll end up with a normal looking snake. They are not compatible genes. So you really can't, you know, 
as a matter of fact, if you actually have like the candy or the toffee and then you breed it to an albino, both are types of albinos and you'll get the candinos and the toffinos. It'll be a visual, but hat for each type of albino. In this case, you don't get the visual. It's just a, a double hat for the ultra male and the caramel albino. So in order to get the, the Camarillo, essentially what you have to do is you have to take two of these and breed them together. And the odds are pretty slim when you're actually breeding these together. I actually pulled up the genetic calculator over here on Morph Market and I plugged in 100% uh, head caramel albino, 100% head ultramel, and I bred it to the same thing. And these are the odds down here that you get. So essentially what you get is you get nine out of 16 normal looking snakes, which let me tell you, this would be kind of a frustrating project. Over half of your snakes would be normal looking and they'd both be, they'd all be 66% head caramel albino, 66% head ultramel. So you get some normal looking snakes and then three out of 16, you'd actually get caramel albinos possible head for ultramel and then three out of 16 you'd get ultramel's possible head for caramel albino and then only one out of 16 you get the camarillo the the visual caramel albino and ultramel if you kind of think about the odds as far as breeding so for example if you had a male and a female that were double head and you bred them together with an average of six eggs per clutch it'd take you like three years just to produce one visual camarillo it'd be kind of frustrating until you produce the Camarillo, you can actually take two Camarillos, breed them together, and then get a whole clutch of Camarillos. So if you're actually wondering what a Camarillo looks like, take a look at this. This is what it looks like. It looks really similar to the Ultramel and the Caramel Albino, although a lot of times you'll actually see that the Camarillo has red eyes where the other two genes won't have red eyes. And for some reason, the two genes come together and give you a snake that has red eyes, but they're not quite as bright red as the regular Albino. It's not like a really bright glaring red. It kind of looks like, uh, kind of like the, I guess you'd say like the candinos or something like that you see kind of the, the the reddish color in some of those and the camarillos will actually have more yellow than either one of the genes the caramel albino or the ultramel a lot of times you actually it's pretty obvious when you produce a camarilla and i actually pulled up some over here on morph market and this kind of surprised me that there was only ever seven Camarillos over here in the history of Morph Market. If you actually look at the difference between all these different, it's, it's pretty much the exact same genes and all these snakes. And look at the differences between the different versions of the same snake. And I'd say most people, when they're thinking of the Camarillo, this is what they're thinking is, this is pretty much your typical example. You'll get a snake that is a lot more yellow than either the caramel albino or the Ultramel and it'll have the red eyes. You can definitely tell the difference between the Camarillo and the Ultramel and the Caramel Albino. I actually pulled up one more snake over here. Take a look at this. This is kind of one of my dream projects that I would do is if I was getting into this project, I would start with this snake right here. This is actually a Bamboo Ultramel. So this is the same gene as Bobby, the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning and the end of every video with the addition of Ultramel. So if you actually took this one step further and added the caramel albino essentially what you get is you get a similar looking snake that has a little bit more yellow in it and you would get the red eyes in the combination which would be pretty awesome all right so it is time for the question of the day and trapier one asks when you moved your rodents out of your reptile room, did you notice any appetite difference in your ball pythons? And that is a very good question. So it's kind of interesting that you asked that because a lot of people say they, they don't recommend keeping rodents in the same room as your ball pythons. And I found that there's really no difference keeping them in here or keeping them in another room. And one of the reasons I actually moved them out is because if you listen to some of my earlier videos, I was actually, you know, trying to explain things with the mice and the rats kind of squeaking in the background they were absolutely driving me crazy I was like I just have to get these rodents out of here but really there's really no difference as far as the appetite of my snake they eat just the same as a matter of fact I think my rats do a little bit better in here because it's a little bit warmer I think the, the really young ones grow a little bit faster here in my reptile room I think they're a little bit sensitive to temperature as a matter of fact I actually had to put a space heater in my basement because I moved them into my basement I think it was a little bit 
bit too cold. I think most people for rats, they recommend keeping them anywhere from 68 degrees to about 80 degrees. You need to keep them kind of in that range. So I'd, I'd say you can either keep them in the reptile room or you can keep them in a separate room. There's no difference at all as far as feeding your ball pythons. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.